It's starting to quiet down outside. All right. I'm going to respond to an amendum video. He was doing a response to me, so I feel like I should respond to this, even though it's like uh, well over an hour of nothing but basically him babbling and ignoring what I'm saying. So it's kind of a waste of time. You know, it's, it's almost entirely him either um, yeah, using insults to dismiss things that he can't cope with intellectually or him uh, arguing against straw men that have nothing to do with what I'm saying or him just ranting over top of what I'm saying. So it's mostly that, which makes it not terribly interesting, but uh, I just feel like I ought to respond to it. So I'm going to, and this is going to be long and probably sort of tedious, uh, so I wouldn't recommend listening to it. <laughs> but if you're a glutton for punishment, well, uh, here you go. It's are better too, but I mean, there's not, other than the kind of silly notion that Mendham has that we didn't evolve to eat meat. Uh, yeah, which is just so obvious that we didn't evolve to eat meat. We have no speed. We can't catch anything. I mean, frankly, what can we catch except eat earthworms? Do you want to sit down and have a yummy bowl of earthworms? Uh, what What do you think we would eat if we were a natural organ? If you threw me into nature and said, here, what are you evolved to eat? You really think I would go out and I would, it would occur to me that I should go out and chase squirrels down and, and, and strangle them <laughs> without getting bitten or scratched um, and chew their, fle- their fur off to get to their yummy, yummy, raw, crappy flesh. Get real. Most people don't even like raw fish, right? And the Japanese, to make raw fish even edible, they have to put a bunch of acids and different, you know, lemon, all kinds of crap on it to make it edible. So what are you pretending that somehow we have some innate yumminess to, you know, chowing down on a zebra? Not a chance, idiot. No, Amendum, you wouldn't... Uh, let, let me put it this way. Let's say I did throw you out in uh, the wilderness... I don't know, let's say British Columbia, because I'm from there. But, you know, there's some wilderness left in New Jersey, I guess, like, uh, what do they call it, the Pine Barrens? Anyway, let's say I did throw you out there. Yeah, you know what, you'd be eating meat pretty fucking fast, because if you didn't, you'd die. Because there's really no food out there that isn't meat. There's a little bit. But you'd get hungry enough that, yeah, without your grocery store, without your refrigerator, without your... Uh, without your ability to cook potatoes over your stove. What do you think you're going to eat out there in Mendham tree bark? No, you're going to figure out how to make a weapon like a spear or maybe a trap or you, or whatever. And you're going to use your brain to uh, figure out how to sneak up on an animal or ambush an animal or whatever, kill it and eat it because that's really the only way you're going to survive. Um, I'll, I'll do a video on... The evolution of the human diet because it's kind of interesting but you know this is just Emenda being an idiot like uh, no humans did are not hyenas we're not uh, bobcats we're not killer whales uh, we're, we're not lots of things we're also not giraffes we're not cows in Mendham when was the last time you you did some grazing when was the last time you walked around on all fours eating grass in Mendham when was the last time that happened you know, when was the last time you went around eating wild plant foods raw? Hmm? When was the last time you just uh, stuck your face in the ground and pulled up a, a raw wild carrot and, and chewed up the you know, dirty root of it? When was the last time you did that? Yeah, see, we have hands, you know. Our ancestors have had them for, well, since before, um, before we branched off from the great apes because the great apes had them. You never seen a video of chimps hunting? You never seen a video of chimps uh, eating monkeys, gazelles, other chimps? Because they do that. I saw a video recently of chimps eating tortoises. They were picking them up with their hands and smashing them against tree trunks and tearing the shells apart and then eating the stuff inside the shells, which presumably they must have enjoyed doing because they were doing it. So, yeah, you're just an idiot. I mean, you know, you're just, like, playing mind games with yourself, I guess. I mean, you're just coming up with this ridiculous straw man concept that 
well, because you wouldn't eat a raw squirrel, therefore you must not be a meat eater. But you wouldn't eat a uh, you wouldn't eat a spruce branch, would you? Yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't just pull up a raw dandelion and eat it, would you? Probably wouldn't even eat a raw potato, would you? No, because our ancestors have been using tools and fire for a very very long time, and we're adapted to using our hands and tools and fire to prepare food. Uh, humans can't even live on wa- raw wild plant foods. Veganism is this modern luxury in Mendham. Yeah, until recently, lots of people lived on meat, 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 meat. You never heard of Eskimos? Never heard of Inuit? Never heard of those guys eating raw blubber, raw seal, raw whale, raw fish? You never heard of that? He doesn't get very much wrong about biology. And I think he gets people... So, says you... (laughs) <laughs> so okay, so something called blithering is your first name. Uh, I mean, I'd say the genius part was a little exaggerated. You know, I think people who complain about the names of people or insult the names of people on social media must be sort of retarded, or they just must not understand the internet. Uh, I came up with the name blithering genius in precisely one second when I made my YouTube account. In 2012, before I ever thought of making a video, it has no significance whatsoever. It's just the first thing that came to my mind when I thought, oh, I need a name for my account. I'm not appealing to authority in the name or in anything else. I'm making arguments. And you always talk about making arguments, but you don't seem capable of actually doing it. Instead, you rely on insults and straw men and all this other bullshit. Because you can't think logically and rationally. You just use the words logical and rational, and you enunciate them a certain way, and you claim that you're so logical and rational, but you can't make a fucking argument. You don't even know what an argument is. You don't know what being rational is. You don't know what logic is. But yes, compared to you, I am a genius. And yes, I know more about biology than you and Mendham. A lot more. And yeah, you're an idiot about this meat thing. It's just some fucking weird bug you got in your brain and you can't let go of it. Um, yeah, but you claim to be a genius, Amanda. You, you think you're going to get a Nobel Prize for your physics ideas, right? So who the fuck are you to talk about this shit? Why don't you just argue the argument, as you like to say? Why don't you argue the issues, the, the points being raised, instead of relying on these, uh, you know, these insults, uh, I didn't make this video insulting you. Did I insult you in this video? I said I don't think you are right about the meat thing. I didn't say Mendham's a fucktarded fucktard. I said he's wrong about thinking that humans didn't evolve to eat meat. Because, yeah, you're wrong. He thinks wrong about psychology, but he has a much better understanding of human nature than, you know, the typical leftist or most people. Uh, I mean, you know, this stupid language of the leftist. Oh, oh, you mean somebody who recognizes that we do in fact live on a planet of seven billion other human creatures, and then we do live on a planet of trillions, I guess, of other sentient feeling organisms, and that this idiotic, whatever, rightist, neo conny capitalist, greedy fucker attitude is really immature. <laughs> It's not smart. It's what a dumb person does. Me first. Yeah, so more typical in Mendham here. No arguments. It just uh, doesn't like the word leftist because, you know, he associates himself with the left, but he doesn't want... Uh, he doesn't like the label. Mendham has a lot of problems with labels that are accurate. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't like to be described because he likes to pretend that his view is not some ideology or whatever. It's just uh, being logical or being smart or whatever, right? Um, sure, there are lots of stupid people on the right. Uh, but uh, the left right now is more dangerous and more stupid and more delusional. And so you are a leftist, and I said you have a more realistic view of nature and human nature than the typical leftist, which is obviously true, because the typical leftist is a you know what you would call a phantasmagoricalist, right? They believe nature is magic. It's like 
My Little Pony and Humans Are Like Smurfs and everything is just all lovey-dovey and... Yeah, you're less phantasmagorical than the typical leftist. You have a view, a dark view of human nature and nature, which is typically found on the right, not the left. Okay, the left tends to be humanist, have a very rosy view of humanity and a very rosy view of nature and a kind of, you know, utopian conception of nature. Uh, So that's what I'm saying there, and I don't think you will actually disagree with that. You just don't like, um, you just want to, you know, say that there's something bad about capitalism because it's not smart to have uh, an economy that functions. Yeah, all the wealth and all the prosperity of the last uh, 500 years of capitalism, that was all stupid. That was all dumb. No, that's, uh, that's one of the few things we've gotten right. It's uh, the system based on selfishness and greed. See, that's the one that actually works. So that's the one that's based on reality. See? He has really thought about those things quite a bit. Um, I don't expect that. That's impressive. But someone who actually thinks about the world, you know? He doesn't just... Yes, well, obviously I thought about it and I did something else. I thought about how do you argue it and can you win with your argument? Does your argument, is it true to the evidence? Or are you making shit up to make your argument? Or are you cheating the argument? Are you playing little lawyer tricks, or are you really defending the truth? Yeah, which is pretty ironic, because right there, that's a little trick, you know, it's a little rhetorical trick, like, oh, I'm not playing tricks, you're playing tricks, oh, you're cheating the argument, but oh, I thought up the argument. And none of this is an argument, Mentum. You might want to look in the dictionary, you might want to look up what an argument is, because that's not it, that's not an argument, that's just... Uh, you asserting that you're superior, you're better. No, you didn't actually do that. You didn't figure out how to make the argument. You made assumptions and you just preach. You're a preacher. You're you're a religious character. You're not a you're not a philosopher. You don't make rational arguments. Go through your videos. How many rational arguments are there? Uh, not not a lot. Some you do some reasoning. You do some rational arguments, but ninety percent of it is preaching. And you're preaching a religion. Uh, which is based on faith. It has two core assumptions, as I explain, and you don't like this, of course, because you don't want to pretend this is just logic or something. But no, it's faith, and it's it, you have assumptions, and your assumptions are hedonism and altruism. And you have some other assumptions too, but those are the big ones, and you just preach this, this religion. I mean, you just repeat yourself over and over again. But no, you don't really engage with ideas or, or engage with critics, in a fair and rational way. You're not engaging with my video here in a fair and rational way. You're just using insults, straw men, and uh, just general babbling and ignoring what I'm saying. And Because you're not interested in having a discussion. You're not interested in having a debate. You're a preacher and a fapper, and you're addicted to this sort of thing you do where you just insult people ad nauseum, and that's what you're doing. So, whatever. Take whatever he's given at face value and just brush off and just do stuff, <laughs> like most people. Um, yeah, he questioned a lot of things and rejected a lot of things. But he retained some things that I rejected at uh, an early age. In particular, altruism. Again, uh, only because we're intelligent. We're smart enough to know. We're smart enough to look in the mirror and see selfish, conniving son of a bitch. And we can figure out that, "Mm, gee, I'd like something better written on my tombstone than dumb animal. Because that's what we're made to be as animals. That's what we are without intelligence. If I don't let you go to to kindergarten, I don't let you go to grammar school, I don't let you go to high school, I don't let you go to college, I don't let you become educated in any way whatsoever... What are you going to be? You're going to be an asshole. (laughs) I mean, fuck. And you're saying, well, that's my native state. No, it really isn't in the sense that you have the tools not to be. Use them. So his justification, his logical argument is just selfishness is bad. That's all he's got. It's like, well, it's just bad. You're just assuming it's bad. You're just you're just making an assumption that 
there's some obligation to be altruistic. And then you're saying it's education. Um, not really, no. I mean, I don't know how it's education. I mean, yeah, you learn in kindergarten that you're not you're supposed to do unto others, blah, blah, blah. But um, that doesn't stop people from being selfish because people are psychologically selfish. And you yourself are a bitch constantly about how selfish people are who have gone to kindergarten and college and all these other things. So what the fuck are you talking about? Uh, no, people are all selfish, all of them. You, me, everybody, we're all selfish. We're selfish because we evolved. We're reproducing machines in Mendham. We're not, we're not magical, uh, you know, altruistic uh, intelligences or whatever. We're machines. And, and selfishness is built into the machine. So, and, and you don't like it. You're like, oh, you look in the mirror and see a selfish clunt or whatever. You, you're not, <laughs> nothing you do is going to change that. You think you're unselfish? You're just deceiving yourself. You're just lying to yourself. Or more generally, morality. And, and more generally, again, if you really watched my videos, you'd know I have absolute contempt for the word morality used by anyone who's not a religious kook. Because it doesn't mean anything. All there are are value equations. That's all. Value is a thing. I've defined it the, in, the, in just overt s statement that the only part of our existence that has value are the feeling bits. And that's all that matters about what's happening on this planet is how does this shit feel? Does it feel good or does it feel shitty? And that's all that matters. In the end, that's the only part that you write in the book of it meant something, were the feelings. And now he's confusing his own two assumptions of altruism and hedonism. He's gone off on this somewhat of a tangent about uh, all that matters are the feelings, which of course is this hedonistic assumption that um, it's the subjective feelings of pain and pleasure that are what matter, which is not really directly related to the morality thing. Uh, he likes to use this term value equations. You know, he likes to pretend this is math or logic or something. I guess that seems more, you know, legitimate or something if you call it math. But, uh, yeah, Amanda, what are the equations then? Write, write me down the equation, okay? Write me the equation. I want to see the equation. Where's the logic that get, gives you do unto others? Can you show that to me? Hmm? Can you show me the logic that gets you do unto others out of nothing? Can you show me the equation that says uh, I have an obligation to somebody? You want to pretend it's logic. You want to pretend it's math. You want to pretend you're doing equations. You're not doing equations. You're fapping to your assumptions. You've got your little religious assumptions that feelies are what matter. And, you know, the holy endorphin molecule, that's your God. And, uh, you know, the endorphin molecule must be served wherever... In whatever blob of jelly it happens to exist, <laughs> so so that's that's your religion, okay? That's what you're doing. Uh, hedonism. Although I know Mandem doesn't like the word hedonism. Yeah, I got no use for morality, and I certainly why would I why would I have any use for a stupid word that just basically says dumb animal? You're just basically if you're a hedonist, you're basically saying I'm too stupid to figure out I'm not playing with only my chess pieces. I'm playing with other people's welfare. I, their dick is in my frying pan. <laughs> you know, I can't be a hedonist uh, and be logical or rational because the only way you can do that is to pretend the other humans aren't human and pretend the other animals aren't doing exactly what they look like they're doing, which is having physical conscious experiences they're feeling good or they're feeling bad okay so there and Mendham is missing the point of course uh, he's he's confusing hedonism with selfishness and I mean sure you could make that confusion but it seems like it's it's pretty stupid to make that confusion in this context so if you were actually listening you'd know that the point of the word hedonism in this context is not to mean selfish, 
It's to mean that you situate value in the subjective experiences of pain and pleasure. And that, in fact, is where you situate value because you say that yourself all the fucking time and you've said that in this video more than once. So yeah, no, it's an accurate description. You just don't like it because you think it has connotations of selfishness or whatever. Now, there is a kind of conflict uh, between hedonism and altruism. or, or in, Well, there is a bit of weirdness in this idea that Value is situated within the subjective experiences of individuals. And of course, the only value that you have direct access to then, under that assumption, would be your own. But yet, you should value everybody else's value. So you should adopt some sort of cosmic perspective and, and, and make your value judgments from this objective perspective. And, and then, from that perspective, supposedly all these feelings would matter. But in fact, from an objective perspective, none of these feelings would matter because they only exist to the subjects that have them. So there's a kind of, you know, you haven't thought this through, obviously. You've never questioned these assumptions. You've never thought about them. You've just taken them for granted your entire life and built up your, you know, your your house of shit on, on this uh, foundation of assumptions. But, uh, yeah, they're just assumptions and they don't make a lot of sense. But yeah, I mean, you want to use another word? Uh, sorry, I'm not going to use the word logic because that would be stupid and, and it would be a lie. Uh, let's see, can you give me a better word to describe a belief system that situates value within subjective experience, within the feelings of pain and pleasure? Can you, can you give me a different word then that's a better descriptor? I don't think so. And, and again, it doesn't really matter what the word is in Mendham. What matters is what it's being used to mean, okay? So, you know, you, you just you are kind of playing games here because you don't want to you don't want to deal with the ideas. You want to deal with anything but the ideas. You want to deal with words. You want to deal with straw men. You want to deal with my name. You want to deal with insults. You want to deal with everything except the actual ideas. Because you're a fucking coward. You're scared of these ideas. You're scared to confront your assumptions. You're scared to look into the abyss. You don't want to consider the possibility that you've built up your worldview on assumptions that, hey, anybody could think about, question, and reject. Uh, sorry. Philosophy is, uh... It's about thinking. It's not about asserting things emphatically. It's not about pretending that their equations are logic. It's about thinking. It's about questioning assumptions, not fapping to them for your entire life. As a description of his value system. But it is an accurate term because uh, it just means that he situates value in the subjective experiences of... Again, it, there's, it has nothing to do with subjective or objective. They're facts. I mean, there, there's no... You can't discount them by calling them subjective experience of being burned alive. Well, of course, it's a subjective experience, but it doesn't change it any. It doesn't change the fact that it's an experience that took place. So, I mean, all the people that had surgery without morphine, they were all subjective experiences. That thing doesn't mean they didn't happen. It doesn't mean that they weren't horrible. It's just a bullshit terminology. This is just such philosophical manipulation. This is just so college. This is just so institutional bullshit. To try to sit there and use fucking, uh, you know, uh, I won't even say fancy vocabulary, but that's just sort of is, and try to disguise what you're saying, and what you're saying is ludicrous. Um, it's clearly you can't make something subjective, which is a you know obviously a pejorative term in philosophical speak, um, when it's objectively a fact that it takes place. The sensations are real. They aren't just subjective. Um, no, it's not a pejorative term in Mendham. The, the distinction between subject and object is kind of important philosophically. It's kind of important that 
you know, these are subjective experiences. It actually matters when you're thinking about them to understand that they're subjective. Now, did I say this discounts them? No, you're just lying. You're just making shit up, right? You're just making up a straw man that you want to fight against because you don't want to deal with what I'm saying. You'd rather fight against some straw man that you, you know, conjured up in your mind that, you know, you've debated before, probably in your mind before. I don't know if anybody's actually put forth that position that you think you're debating here, but whatever. No, I'm just saying here is the term that I'm going to use to describe this this value system, and here's what it means. So I'm giving an accurate definition of your your value system, that you situate value in the subjective experiences of pain and pleasure, and that is the fucking truth. So why don't you just fucking accept that and say, oh yeah, that's true. He's accurately describing it. I might not like the word, but he's accurately describing it. Pain and pleasure. Fremendum. Those are the things that matter. It's the feelings of pain and pleasure that sentient beings experience. Right, and logically, what else could possibly be of value? Everything that we value, we value because it has the effect of making people happy or sad. That's the only way it has value, is that somebody has to be getting off on it. And if nobody's getting off on it, then it wouldn't have any value, and nobody would pay money for it. Nothing would, it would just be totally ignored, like mud. There's mud in the backyard here. Notice how, when it comes to his core assumptions, uh, when they're under question, and Mendham simply uh, you know, defends them or justifies them by asserting them emphatically, right? Because they're just assumptions. He cannot question them. He cannot think about them. Uh, there's nothing logical about assuming that our feelings of pain and pleasure have value. That that's not something we are compelled to believe by logic. Uh, it's an assumption. And I think it's a kind of means-ends confusion. It's a sort of confusion between valuing, which is what our emotions are doing, you know, what our feelings are, they're feelings of valuing, and value. Our emotions make us value things. Um, that's what they're there to do, but that doesn't mean that they are value in themselves. Uh, now, again, there could be a philosophical discussion about this, but Amendum is not capable of having one because he's not capable of thinking about this without you know, freaking out because it causes him so much cognitive dissonance because he's literally built his entire life and his entire ego on this foundation. You know, he's so ego invested in this that questioning it is just you know, freaking him out. But uh, you, you can certainly question this assumption and reject it, and I did question it and reject it. Because no, I don't think those feelings have value. That's, that's not where I situate value. Sorry, um, I don't think feelings matter. They are uh, the feeling of mattering, right? They, they are valuing, not value. If my, my feelings make me value uh, having sex or having a, a meal or taking care of my children or whatever. And it's those things that I do that have value. Value is... Um, i got to wait for the sirens. Something's going on. There's been so many sirens lately. Uh, where was I? Um, I think value is a subject-object relation. So I value things out there in the world. Well, I value reproduction. Okay, that's what matters to me. Nobody wants it. No, nobody will pay. I can't go on the street and sell buckets of mud. Because nobody wants it. Because nobody can get off on it. Nobody can feel good sitting there looking at the bucket of mud. So, duh. Yeah, the only way something becomes valuable is that it has to make people feel good. <laughs> yeah, if I say things in a very emphatic tone and say, duh, uh, they must be right. They're facts now. I make something into a fact by saying, obviously it's true, duh, in a certain tone of voice. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, uh, no, well, that's not what makes things uh, have value. I mean, there's nothing that objectively makes things have value because there are no objective values. Sorry. Uh, there, there are subjective values. Uh, living beings can value things. Well, there are objective values in the following sense. 
evolution creates beings that have uh, functions, right? That have purposes. So in that sense, there are objective values. And uh, there's one objective value, which is the value of reproduction. But it's only objective in the sense that it's, uh, it's a way of modeling the form in terms of its function. So you can think about it as objective in that sense. But it's subjective in that each organism has its own purpose. And the cosmos has no purpose, right? And Mendham admits this. He admits there's no purpose to the universe. He doesn't claim there's a purpose to the universe. But then he turns around and claims that there is a purpose to the universe. That all these feelings are somehow cosmically significant. Well, you've got to make up your mind. If they're significant to the beings that have them, then they're not cosmically significant or significant to other beings, necessarily. If they're cosmically valuable, then they must be valuable to the cosmos, right? See, there is no value without a subject in Mendham. Uh, value is always relative to the subject. So you, you can't really have this, this value equation, as you like to call it, in which uh, the sentient feelings of all the organisms in the universe are, are what matter. Because to whom do they matter? Right? Anyway. Uh, yeah, and, you know, Amendum just, he thinks that, oh, he's doing logic by saying, duh, and, and uh, you know, saying, just emphatically asserting the same thing over and over again. <laughs> That's his logic, right? Just emphatically assert my assumption over and over. That's logic. No, that's not logic. That, um, are the ultimate source of all value. Nothing else matters. It's just what you feel. No, it's the element. It's the kernel. It's what all the other value is made out of. Just like you're made out of electrons and protons, okay, essentially. That's the elemental bits, you know, and the force bits, but... That's what makes you up, that element, all right? There's nothing else. That's all there is. That's the structure. That's the thing that makes the thing work. Well, that's your assumption, but it's, uh, it's wrong. It's a very bad model of uh, value. It doesn't make any sense. Sorry. Because there is no objective value. That There is no value in the electrons and the neutrons and the protons, right? I don't think there's any value in there, do you? No, it only exists from a subjective perspective. And you, <laughs> I mean, again, you have some kind of, I, I really need to spell this out in a more precise way or find the language to express it. There's a kind of contradiction in your worldview. Um, I'll have to think about how to express this in a way that's more clear. You know, that you cannot universalize subjective values. You cannot say value is in these subjective feelings, but these subjective feelings are cosmically significant. What, you know, because what makes them significant is their sub- subjectiveness, that, that they're experienced, that they're felt. Right? It's not the configurations of the, the endorphin molecules or whatever that you're concerned about, right? Or that you think where you think the value resides. You you believe the value resides in the subjective experiences of of beings. So it resides within their subjectivities. But then you also believe that this is some sort of objective substance that exists like neutrons, protons, and electrons. I'm sorry, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, I'll see if I can come up with a more a uh, clear way of saying it, but yeah, there is a kind of contradiction in that, or a kind of error, conceptual error. And when I was very young, I rejected hedonism. I rejected altruism, or again, morality, more generally. And I rejected... Yeah, well, which is just idiotic nihilism, which is just saying, I decided to be a selfish cunt. I decided to become a dumb animal. So in spite of my education, I decided to just turn the logic engine off and pretend it made sense somehow for me to turn everybody else into nothing and turn myself into something very important. That's the definition of a stupid cunt. Yes, well, more insults in place of dealing with the ideas or making arguments or whatever. But, uh, no, it's not the definition of a stupid cunt. Uh... 
everybody is special to themselves. Everybody is selfish. I didn't make myself selfish by, by rejecting altruism. I accepted reality. I recognize that um, altruism doesn't work as a value system, and it's a lie anyway. Nobody is actually altruistic. So, no, I just uh, became more honest and uh, more aware of what was going on, more psychologically aware and more philosophically aware. And I had a, a value system that was more honest than, you know, claiming that I'm altruistic and that... You know, I'm doing this or that because I'm a good person or whatever. Instead, I came to understand that, no, no, I'm doing things because there are incentives or rewards and punishments, approval and disapproval and so on and so forth. And I've been conditioned to do this or that or whatever. And that people are not altruistic. And also that there's no a priori uh, reason to be altruistic or to believe in it. I'm not compelled by logic or whatever, um, that it was a kind of assumption and also a delusion or a self-deception. So I rejected that. And that's necessary to be rational because, yeah, you have to reject lies. You have to reject bullshit to face uh, reality and to have a rational worldview. You have to question assumptions. And if you find them to be unacceptable rationally... You know, upon examination and reflection, then you have to reject them. The hedonism. And I rejected those things because of biological and psychological theorizing. You don't theorize psychologically, so again, just more nonsense. You had impulses, and you decided to go with your impulses rather than any rhetoric that implied that maybe you can't have what you want. No, I I theorized about psychology and biology. As a kid, I started thinking about how does nature work? How does the brain work? What are emotions? How do they work? Uh, is there really something out there called good and evil? No, it doesn't exist out there. Oh, so what is it? Well, it must be something in my head. Okay, so what is it? How did it get in there? Oh, rewards and punishments, you know, being told that this is good and this is bad, blah, blah, blah. So I started theorizing about psychology and biology and the relation between those things when I was about nine years old. And that's how I arrived at a whole bunch of conclusions. So, sorry, uh, no, you are you want to make this into, oh, you're just a selfish clunt and you decided to rationalize your selfishness, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not what happened. Um, I have a story about this. I actually have a video on it and, uh, and a blog post on it. And in fact, it was kind of the opposite. I don't want to recount the whole story, but it started out with me trying to defend grasshoppers from being killed. Okay, that's where I first started thinking about morality because I wanted to save the grasshoppers from being killed by kids because I thought that was bad. And, you know, I want, I didn't want the grasshoppers to die. So, no, in Mendham, I'm not uh, trying to rationalize my selfishness or any of this bullshit, but this is just, again, you're not making arguments. You're not, you're not you know, for all your talk about being rational and logical and all that shit, you don't seem capable of actually doing it. You don't seem capable of, you know, actually uh, living up to your big words. You haven't made a single fucking rational or logical argument. You've got insults, you've got straw men, you've got uh, like this bullshit claims that have nothing to do with what I said. But you have no arguments because you can't address the points I'm making because basically it's too fucking scary, isn't it? It's just too scary that your whole worldview might be built on a foundation of nothing, right? It's just like religious people. It's scary to contemplate that God doesn't exist. Well, it's the same thing here. You're afraid to contemplate that your assumptions are just assumptions and that you that, that they can be thrown away. So... Just like if you had a 
if you had a, a bad impulse, like you felt like you wanted to do violence to a woman or you wanted to rape one or you wanted to molest a kid or something, you had some sort of physiological reaction that was totally inappropriate and you knew it. You just didn't want to hear that, oh, I mean, I'm not allowed to murder women for my pleasure. Damn. Well, no, this is just you making up bullshit stories, but um, who who decides what is allowed, Amanda? You think there's some god that says you're not allowed to rape women for your own pleasure? Or do you think that's written into logic? You want to show me the logical derivation, like how you derive that logically or maybe with math? Yeah, you want to do that? You're not going to be able to do that. There's no laws out there in in the cosmos. Uh, I mean, there are laws of physics. You think it's in the laws of physics? Physics doesn't stop people from raping. You think it's in the laws of biology? No, rape is a pretty good reproductive strategy in a lot of situations. So where do you think this comes from in Mendham? And that's all you did. So you did nothing more than what the basic psycho killer does. You found some lame excuse to say it's okay to be an asshole. And it's not. Well, again, no, that's not an accurate description of, uh, of how I arrived at these ideas at the tender age of nine, but, um, well, at least of the rejection of altruism, which happened between nine and ten. But as I said, I have a a story about that, which I could link, so I'm not going to go through it. But uh, you say it's not okay to be an asshole, right? Don't you need a justification for saying it's not okay to be an asshole? I mean, it's kind of funny since you are such an asshole. I mean, you really are. Come on, like, just look at look at your behavior. I mean, you're addicted to, to hurting people and mend them. You're addicted to being an asshole. That's what you do, you know. It's not what I do. Like, I wasn't an asshole to you in my video, right? You're being an asshole to me because this is what you need. You need to be an asshole. It takes me some effort to do it. But, uh, no. Like, so do you have a justification for uh, this claim? You seem to believe that it's not okay to be an asshole. Okay, so what's your justification? Do you have one? No. You just assert it. Oh, it's obviously not okay to be an asshole. Why not, Edmendum? You think that's philosophy, just asserting things and then just letting it stand? No, that's just, I just believe that. No, that's faith. You just believe it on faith. You've never thought about it. You're just like a person who believes in God and has never questioned it, taken it for granted, because that's what mommy said. That's what mommy told me, right? Just like you like to make fun of the religious people. Mommy said so. Oh, mommy said do unto others. Mommy said it's not okay to be an asshole, and I've always believed it because Mommy said so. There's no difference. You just believe it because Mommy said so. And also because of philosophical skepticism and uh, inquiry. Yeah, just bullshit. This is just bullshit. You didn't inquire, you ran away. There's no way you in, you're inquiring what's the truth, and the truth is selfishness works. No, that is just fucking idiotic bullshit there's no way logic takes you that direction <laughs> he loves the word logic it's funny uh well logic is again just deduction but um logically we are free to question these assumptions and so what logic does is it shows you oh uh it's an assumption when you start questioning it you say well, what what's the um reason for it where's the justification for it oh i can't find one oh so that's what logic tells you there there is no justification for it Uh, or at least it's certainly you would discover it doesn't pop out of logic because nothing pops out of logic logic has no implications without premises logic has no implications other than these you know the tautological things like you know, all contradictions are false and all that shit. But, you know, those are not uh, substantive implications. They're vacuous. They're vacuous truths because they don't they don't have any reference in, in the real world. Um, a claim like um, I ought to uh, take the feelings of others into consideration 
is a substantive claim, right? It's making a moral claim. It's saying I have some obligation. So where does the obligation come from? Why do I have this obligation? I'm perfectly free to ask these questions. And yeah, logic, or you could say rationality, it's a better term to use. Rationality not only gives me that freedom, but leads me to ask the question. And then also rationality or thought or whatever you want to call it, science, uh, leads me to the understanding that, oh, uh, selfishness is built into nature. So obviously nobody's altruistic, really. And then I started thinking about it and, oh, altruism is kind of useless anyway. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. I mean, I have videos on it and blog posts on it. But uh, yeah, uh, I thought about it, Mendham. You never thought about it. So you're insulting me and you're claiming that, oh, I'm just being a selfish client. I'm just rationalizing what I want to do. Um, that's bullshit. And uh, it's cowardly. Why don't you just deal with the ideas instead of making these uh, non-arguments, these uh, you know fallacious, irrational arguments, these ad hominem arguments? Why can't you deal with the actual issue rationally? Since you like that word so much, rationally, why don't you apply some rationality here? Philosophical inquiry. I saw that those were assumptions. They were not necessary. Uh, there, there's no assumption here besides, again, pointing to the obvious facts that brain has sensations. My personal brain happens to be connected to my personal body, and it gives I personally feel my broken leg. I don't personally feel somebody else's broken leg. But, I mean, obviously, rationally, I know, oh, yeah, their brain is doing the feeling, though. So it is a broken leg. It's not not a broken leg when it happens to somebody else. It's just as bad as if it happened to me. And that logic is inescapable by anybody who has any honesty at all. If you have any intellectual integrity at all, you're stuck with that fact sitting right there in front of you. Yeah, well, nobody is denying that uh, <laughs> that that other sentient beings have feelings in them. That's not what I said, was it? So uh, talk about being dishonest. Why are you debating a straw man that has nothing to do with what I said? What I said was, it's an assumption. It's not a necessary assumption. Neither of those things are necessary assumptions. Hedonism is not a necessary uh, belief. It's not forced on me by logic. And neither is altruism. I can question those assumptions and reject them. And I did. Okay? You're not dealing with the actual points I'm making, you're trying to divert it into some other discussion, like, oh, this guy's too stupid to know that other people has feelings. Oh, I want to argue against retards, because I'm, I'm afraid of arguing against what he's actually saying. No, I could exist without them. I would not disappear in a puff of smoke if I didn't believe in them. And so I decided not to believe in them. <laughs> yes, because you decide to turn it all into some kind of dogma. Oh, they just invented morality. It doesn't have anything to do with logic. Well, yeah, it does. Something like the Golden Rule, for example, has just pure logic, right? Do unto others as you expect others to do unto you. Gee, wow, I, I'm an Einstein. I figured out that if I punch somebody in the face that I should maybe expect to get punched back. Woo, wow, I have to be a huge intellectual to figure this out. Uh, <laughs> well, you've got a ways to go then. Uh, yeah, so there was no logic there, Amendum. I, I didn't see you derive uh, the golden rule with logic. I saw you just assert it and then claim it. Somehow it's logical. And then you said, oh, if I punch someone in the face, I should expect to get punched back. Well, actually, it depends on who you punch in the face. Whether you expect to get punched back, but the expectation is not what the golden rule is about. It's about an obligation, right? It's saying you should do this. It's a should. Okay, so where does that should come from? And Mendham, you think it comes out of logic? Show me the fucking logic that ends up with the conclusion, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Show me the logic. This is a good exercise for you in humility, <laughs> in, in eating your own shit. Because you're not going to be able to do it. Because there's no way to do it.
It's not logical. It's an assumption. Yes, it is dogma. You learned it in kindergarten. You learned it from mommy. I, I mean, no. It's just so fucking simple. And yet you assholes have tried to make it complicated. And it's not complicated at all. Mm, I don't think I made it complicated. I think I expressed it pretty simply. I said it was an assumption. And uh, I'm not compelled to believe it. Sorry. <laughs> Try again. Because, well, I also saw that they had some uh, implications that didn't make a lot of sense. And um, they conflicted with my understanding of uh, life, I guess. Yeah, you didn't have an understanding of life, right? Because all you were really just saying is me, feely. No, Mandem, you've lost the script. I said I, I don't, uh, I don't situate value in, in feelies. That's, that's you who situates value in feelies. But no, again, all you're doing here is you're coming up with some story that isn't true, that's just made up in your head as a way of, uh, uh you know, the irony here is you're, you're accusing me of rationalizing, which is your way of, of rationalizing, not, not dealing with the issue I'm raising, not thinking. You're rationalizing not thinking about something. Okay, so just don't accuse me of rationalizing and all this bullshit. No, that's not how I arrived at these things. Yes, I thought about life in Mendham, like biology, like nature, like I was out in nature every day, and yeah, I saw, you know, animals eat animals, and I started to understand like, ecology, and I read a lot of books and stuff, and I was like, yeah, I see how it works. You know, there's a flow of energy, and all these different creatures are you know, participating in that, and some of them are, are eating others in different ways, and and it's like a zero-sum game, and also evolution. Understanding evolution, therefore, knowing that altruism can't evolve. Okay, I have to endure it. I have to pay the price, and I get the profit. And you just decided to say, it doesn't matter if I steal it from somebody else, it doesn't matter that if my my satisfaction is made out of somebody else's misery, and it's just a plainly retarded logic. It's just a slave owner's logic. <laughs> I think plainly retarded logic is is a pretty good uh, term to describe Amendum's uh, train of thought. Uh, Sorry, uh, calling something plainly retarded isn't an argument. It's not logic. It's just uh, it's a ridiculous slur. It's it's just bullshit. It's slave owner's logic. I mean, what's your logic in Mendham? You haven't given any arguments. Shouldn't you be able to give a fucking argument? Shouldn't you be able to demonstrate some of this logic? If, if my uh, reasoning is incorrect, shouldn't you be able to show me logically that I'm wrong? Well, you can't, obviously, right? You would have done it if you could. You, you <laughs> oh, Whatever. It's just, I, I don't know. This is getting tedious. I, I feel like I need to go through this whole damn thing, even though it's kind of a waste of time, just to, you know, just for, I don't know, thoroughness, I guess. I don't know why else I'm bothering to do this. Life is selfish, so life is not altruistic. Life is so this is more horseshit, right? We're not just life. We're supposed to be intelligent life. We can be intelligent life. You're, you know, pompously prancing around using words brithering genius, implying that you know something about genius or intelligence or how to add 2 plus 2 and divide by 7, and you can maybe do something even more complicated and do you know, some sort of uh, quadratic equation or something, you know, you're implying that you're doing something intelligent, and yet you're sitting there saying, oh no, my basic philosophy is uh, you don't even pay attention to two plus two. <laughs> you know, you don't want to touch the math, because you know where the math leads. So you're running away from it. You're running away from intelligence. So to say life necessitates us being assholes or stupid is just idiotic. That's why we got the big brain for no purpose. Because it doesn't make us more aware 
more capable of having more complex strategies to evade predators and to gain our food and to do things in a more sensible way and to build toilets and not to, you know, shit in our drinking water and all this kind of stuff. We can't figure anything out. And more ridiculous bullshit. Um, <laughs> uh, fuck, where do I even begin? Uh... So, in Mendham believes that because of what he thinks, uh, what he calls intelligence, he thinks this intelligence somehow enables us to not be selfish, right? I mean, this doesn't make a lot of sense because um, intelligence really doesn't change your emotions. It, it isn't the motivating factor. All of your motivations are generated by your emotions, and um, and those emotions evolved to make you reproduce. And that's what that big brain is for in Mendham. It's to make you reproduce. It's not to make you an altruist. It's to make you reproduce. No, we can't escape from selfishness with our big brains. If you think we can, you really need to make an argument to that effect. You need to show how that's possible. I mean, sure, people can do all kinds of weird things with the big brains. They create lots of potential for complex behavior. But it's always driven by emotions, and the emotions are never going to adopt some cosmic perspective and care about the feelings of all sentient beings or whatever, and you certainly are no example of that. Uh, what you are is a, a bitch, basically. Right? This is your little hobby, your little addiction. you you got to constantly be a bitch. So, uh, yeah, I mean, sorry. Um uh, I don't know. This is silly. I mean, I don't even know why I'm listening to this shit. It's just getting tedious, but I feel like I have to fucking do it. So I'll, I'll just keep going for a little bit longer. I might not make it to the end of this thing. And you're just insulting the whole history of human beings spending thousands of years to figure out how the, uh, the world works. And you're saying, no, let's fuck all that. Fuck learning anything. Let's just go back to being animals. Except I want to keep all my modern tools... I want to be able to manipulate people with words and vocabulary. I want to keep all these weapons, but I want to pretend they came from God. I don't know how he got God out of that. Uh, okay, so keep all the weapons. Well, no, I want to ideally expand rationality, my own rationality. That's the main goal of philosophy. It's to be rational, so not to be deluded, not to be self-deceived, not to be full of shit like you, but to actually understand the human condition and what we can and can't do and what it's like to be a human. So that's that's philosophy. And, uh, and no, I'm not shitting on Isaac Newton or Albert Einstein or whatever, but maybe I'm shitting a little bit on your kindergarten teacher or your mommy because I'm saying that they didn't have, you know, the ultimate truth about human nature. And, yeah, they kind of lied to you pretending that there was some objective good and evil that was out there when really it was just the norms of the culture and the rules of the society. So they were pretending that these rules that we create were something, you know, in the universe or, or, or God created them. Okay, so it's actually more like you can't let go of this vestige of God. You have to believe that there's this, you know, maybe not, not God out there, but uh, God's tailbone or, or God's, uh, I don't know, God's perspiration is still out there in the cosmos, and you know that's where good and evil comes from, or something, right? I mean, you, you, it, it, you know, again, there's this sort of contradiction in your worldview that you don't believe there's good and evil in nature, yet you believe it's objectively there, and we can discover it with logic, uh, or, or I don't know, we can discover it empirically. But it did. But nature isn't good. But it's there anyway. But the cosmos isn't good. But it's somewhere out there anyway, and we can discover it because it was like hidden inside logic. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Sorry. Yeah, this is why I rejected all this shit because it doesn't make any sense. You can't make sense out of it. You can't build a, a rational worldview on this crap. So no, I'm going, I'm going beyond. And yeah, I'm taking all the good stuff with me and I'm leaving behind the bad stuff. Just like an atheist says, well, yeah, I'm not going to throw away all the knowledge of uh, you know, accumulated human wisdom, but that doesn't mean that I have to believe in God just because that's part of our culture. 
I can I can reject God and still believe in physics. You know, in fact, it might be easier to believe in physics and biology if I reject God. So yeah, I'm going to throw away the stupid thing and keep the smart stuff. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. That they didn't have to be hard earned, and they didn't come with an equal amount of knowledge about social value and use and how to use. No, all of that information came with the tools and you just don't want the instructions, the the warning label, the liability label. You don't want to read the liability label on your recreational device. You want to take no responsibility. Uh, well, I'm all about society having rules and people having responsibilities within society. Uh, I just don't believe that there's some, you know, magic uh, cosmic fairy dust that, that makes some things good and other things evil. I just think we come up with rules and we decide on those rules together and they ultimately come out of um, power. They come out of human will. They, they don't come out of the cosmos. And it's just a way for us to organize ourselves for a mutual benefit. And uh, ultimately, it's all based on selfishness. You know, when you join a society, if you're part of a society, you benefit from the society and you're willing to contribute to it in proportion to the amount you benefit from it. And if it's fucking you over, then you try to undermine it or leave it or whatever. So, yeah, you don't need to believe in the good and evil or whatever to, to believe in society and to want to have a civilization. And uh, in Mendham, it's you who wants to destroy all of this. You want it all destroyed. You want civilization destroyed, humanity destroyed, life destroyed, you know, the biosphere wiped out. If you could um, nuke the universe, you'd do it. It's kind of ironic. You know, you're accusing me of wanting to just like throw away all this stuff that we've accumulated. <gasps> this is kind of silly. Is hedonistic, or at least sentient life is hedonistic. But that doesn't mean that. Again, so it's a stupid conversation to have. We're not paramecians. Yes, paramecians can't do anything but react to basic mechanisms, and they certainly don't feel anything. And so you go higher organism, you get to what, whatever it is, fruit flies or some sort of you know, minimum number of neurons before you start having sense organs, you know, where I think the ouch thing happens. Um, but they can't think about the context of the ouch. They can't know that the other fruit flies are feeling organisms. They can't do any of that context. And, of course, we can with a minimum use of our intelligence. I mean, you don't need anything more than, you know, 65 IQ points to get um, the logic that, oh, other people feel. I'm sure you only need 65. So, again, more tedious bullshit that has nothing to do with... Uh anything that I'm saying. Uh, yes, in Mendham, I know other people have feelings, blah, blah, bitty, blah, blah. I know you'd like to be arguing with an IQ 65 person who, or maybe with a paramecium because you think you could win that argument. But uh, no, you're not arguing with a paramecium or somebody with a 65 IQ. And no, I'm not claiming that people don't have feelings. Uh, what I'm saying is there's no logical necessity that uh, I owe them anything, okay? Them having feelings does not imply that I owe them anything. You think that somehow follows? Again, why don't you try to do the fucking logic? You like the word so much, why don't you try to fucking do some logic? Go to the library, get a book on logic, because you obviously don't know what it is, and get that book and then sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and uh, show me the logical derivation. Go ahead and try to derive, do unto others as you should have them do unto you, or I owe somebody something or whatever from people have feelings. Go ahead and try to do that. Um, I think I'm done with this. I'm tired. It's been you know, like almost an hour and a half. I don't know if I'll do any more because it's very repetitive. Maybe I'll go back later and uh, I don't know, do another one, but I'm done for tonight. So as always, thanks for listening.